In this video, we're going to be diving into the latest release from OpenAid, their newest embedding models. Before I dive into the new updates, I first wanted to just quickly clarify what embeddings are for those who might not be aware or those that are just looking for a refresher. What embeddings are, are essentially taking text or code and it's converting it into a mathematical vector, which is a series of numbers. Now, each of those numbers represents the essence of the input. By obtaining that essence within this numerical representation, this is really at the heart of natural language language processing. This allows machines to really grasp the subtleties of language by understanding the context and meaning behind words and sentences. At its core, embeddings that are numerically similar are also semantically similar. So if we just look at the example here, you, you can see that bovine buddies and moo are grouped closely together, similar to woof and canine companions. Now on the far left corner here, you see that a quarterback throws a football is not really related to the animal kingdom in the right hand side here for lack of a better term. Now, if you just scroll down a little bit, there's also this really nice interactive visualization that shows embeddings of text samples. So within here, you can see, and you can scroll in and out to look at this, and you can actually drag around and you get a better idea on what vectors and embeddings look like in three-dimensional space. In this example, you can see that there's animals within the red, there's athletes within the green, within the pink, there is villages, and then purple transportation, and then film. The nice thing with this example Example, as you can see that all of the different items that are related are grouped together as they should be. And that's how you can think about when you're setting up your embeddings. So the announcement today are that there are two new embeddings models. There's the text embeddings three small model, as well as the text embeddings three large model. But let's touch on the text embedding three model first. There is a stronger performance even for this new smaller version. The text embeddings A to two model is the model that was released in December, 2020. When you compare the text embeddings three model to text text embeddings A to 2, the average score that was used to benchmark this, the miracle metric, increased from 31.4 to 44%. For the commonly used benchmark of the MTE, it's increased from 61 to 60. One of the more exciting things with this model is it's five times cheaper than text embedding A to 2. So it's just a fraction of a penny to embed over a thousand tokens. The other thing to note is they don't have plans to deprecate text embeddings A to 2. So don't worry if you're still using those endpoints and they're not easy to change in what you've set up. Don't worry about it just quite yet. Now to get into the larger model that they release. So text embeddings three large. This is the next generation of their embeddings model and it has a considerable amount of dimensions. The dimensions go as high as 3072. It has twice as many dimensions as text A to 2. And obviously the performance of this model is considerably higher. So if you look on the miracle average here, you see that it really is leaps and bounds ahead of both ADA as well as the text embeddings 3 model. And then you can also see that performance on the MTEB average as well. The other thing with the text embeddings 3 large model is it is only fractionally more expensive than the ADA 2 model. So great news for AI developers all around. The other really cool thing for these models is there is native support for shortening embeddings. Now, if we just hop back to this example that we were looking at earlier, if we just look at this, and if you can imagine if there's higher dimensions on each access, that's going to occupy more space. So with more space, arguably, you're going to be able to have more accuracy in being able to pinpoint and be more finite with how related different items are to one another. Now, with that being said, the thing with that is, say, if you go for the largest dimension, Dimension and that you're using that over 3000 dimension, you're going to be incurring higher compute costs by continually having to query more vectors of a greater size. And what these new models allow you to do is you're able to ad hoc decrease the size of the dimensions. So the benefit of having this flexibility is now you're able to choose between the trade-off of performance and cost. Say if you're using the latest and greatest with the most dimensions, that's going to cost you more, but it's also going to take a longer time to parse all the queries. Say if you have hundreds of thousands or potentially millions of vectors that need to be parsed through, that's going to incur a higher cost when you're going to retrieve that, as well as a higher cost of embedding. And then also the performance is going to take longer. So, so say if you're looking for something fast and you're able to create really high quality embeddings, you'll likely be able to get away with using a smaller model. But like everything in programming, there's going to be a trade-off. So do you want accuracy or do you want speed? That's generally going to be what it boils down to. But with the native support for shortening, it gives you the flexibility 
flexibility where you can shorten down the dimension of the text embeddings three large model all the way down to 256 from that 1070. Even when you shrink down the newest text embeddings three large model to 256 and you compare it to the text embeddings A to 2 model, which had 1536 in terms of dimensions, it still performs that. So say if you're using a vector database like Pinecone Serverless, by having the smaller size, it's both going to be faster as well as cheaper to run the embeddings. And all you have to do to change the dimensions is when you're using their model is you just have to specify the different dimension that you want to use within the API parameter that you pass in. To quickly touch on some of the other announcements, they're going to be decreasing GPT 3.5 Turbo once again, this time by 50%. And they're also introducing a new GPT 3.5 Turbo 0125, which includes various improvements for higher accuracy at responding in different requested formats. Say maybe if you're asking for JSON or YAML or something like that, hopefully this new improvement offers better quality results for those types of things. There's also a new GPT-4 Turbo Preview that just came out. This model completes code generation more thoroughly than their previous model that they mentioned here. And the intent of the preview model is to reduce the quote unquote laziness where the model doesn't complete a task. But you might've experienced this laziness where say you're asking it to return a portion of code to you and it will return all of your code, but then there's a particular function right in the middle there where there's a comment and it says fill in your function here which isn't always the most helpful and it can actually be quite annoying hopefully this new preview model does resolve that quote-unquote laziness for those types of requests and there's also a note within here is say if you want the newest releases of gpt4 you're able to set the model to gpt4 turbo preview within the model name alias and you'll be able to pick up all of those releases as they come so there's also an updated moderation model if that's something that you're interested in and then finally they're also launching a platform to give developers more visibility into the usage of their API keys. So you'll be able to see the number of tokens that you're using across all of the different models and all of the different keys will make managing your OpenAI applications that much easier. So if you're interested in seeing how to try out these models, I'm going to be putting out some videos in the coming days where I'll be showing you how to integrate this into real life demonstration projects that you can go ahead and use as a starting off point for using these new embeddings models. So that's it for this video. Hopefully you found this video useful. If you did, please like, comment, share, and subscribe. Otherwise, until the next one.